fine, man. Welcome to day one of competition at Vancouver 2010, the Paralympic Games. It all begins with puck drops of day one. Game one in sledge hockey tournament, it's Canada versus Italy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Canada's quest for triple gold at the Olympics and Paralympics in hockey, along with Drew Rickon, an aspiring Paralympian and ambassador for the game. I'm Gino Retta. It is great to have you with us. Well, I spoke to Bob Nicholson of Hockey Canada just moments after Sidney Crosby's golden goal. Canada had two gold medals, the men and the women. He said, the job's not over yet. We want triple goal, and that means he wants to see a goal from sledge hockey. That quest begins today. The gentleman will be calling the action. Thanks very much, guys. Get back to you shortly. Drew, uh, you and I were talking just for a broadcast, and you feel an intense passion because you very nearly made this team. What are the expectations from Team Canada going to this tournament? Well, certainly, Gina, the expectations are pretty huge for this tournament. At the annual general meeting, all three teams were told gold, three gold medals and nothing else will do. Coming into this, they've trained hard. They're ready to go. I was speaking with Sean Freiberg, the men's team uh, assistant coach, yesterday. And Sean said the team is energized, they're fired up, and they're ready to get some games started. All right, let's talk about the obstacles. On the men's side, it was Russia. On the women's side, it was USA. Who's the biggest foe in this side, in sledge hockey? In our pool, it's Norway. Norway's our biggest challenge. We've got to go through Norway to get to USA for the gold medal. You've got to avoid beat Norway in the round robin, then, because otherwise you could end up facing the USA in a semifinal game instead of the gold medal. And we don't want to see that. We want to beat the Norwegians. We want to establish our dominance on the game. And we want to see USA for gold. But, but before you face USA, before you face Norway, before you face anybody else, the tournament begins today as Canada coming onto the ice at Thunderbird Arena, getting set to face Italy. That game is coming up next. Teammates are going to be busy today and tomorrow. They're on the ice for a couple of games. You can see all the highlights from day one and day two at the Winter Paralympics tomorrow at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on CTV. 20 minutes complete. Canada leading by a score of 1 nothing. Penalty's been an issue, but Drew, you and I were talking about the physicality of this game, and we saw plenty of evidence of that in the first period. Certainly, Gene. What we're looking at here is we, we see Todd Nicholson starting to set the flow. He lets a big hit go in the first period. One of the things that Canada is going to do really well in this tournament is they're going to show their physicality. With a 15-minute game, it's kind of ruining our flow. Uh, we've got to stay out of the box. We've got to basically control that game five on five, or if we can, get to our power play. Now, the good news is that while Canada was playing shorthanded much of that first period, six of the 15 minutes, they had some guys doing a great job on the PK. Absolutely. Brad Bowden, one of the uh, two penalty killers, uh, with Greg Westlake, the other penalty kill line, and Mark Dorian, Jeremy Booker. Looking forward to making sure that we're killing those penalties and staying out of the box is going to help us win these games. I know, spending almost half of that opening period shorthanded with the man in the penalty box. Coach is not going to be very happy with that. Shots on goal, just 4-1 to one in favor of Canada over Italy. Talk to me about the sledge, Drew. Tell me about the equipment. Certainly one of the biggest things that you're going to find is the difference in the equipment. Uh, what we're looking at here is we're looking at one of the sleds that you'll see. Now, the sled is the main piece of equipment. Basically, you're sitting three inches up off the ice on two skate blades with a bucket that can be customized if you've got one leg, two legs, or no legs at all. And now, that, that's the sled itself. The skate blades are very similar to the typical skate blades you said. And, and as you become a better skater, as you be become a better sledder, the blades get closer together to give you more mobility. Is that the idea? Yep. The closer the blades are, uh, the more mobile you are, the quicker you can turn, the more balance you have. And you'll see what we have right here. Those blades are about two inches apart. Just to put it in perspective, a guy like Brad Bowden and Greg, Greg Westlake, they're sitting on blades right now that are about an eighth of an inch or three quarters of an inch apart. All right, that's the sled. The other part that I find absolutely dramatic are the sticks. Now, something you notice right away is the lie, but I want to talk about the butt end, the top of the stick. Tell me about that. Now, certainly, what you're looking at here is, is you've got these picks. Now, this is what propels us up and down the ice. These are our main weapons. You have one stick in each hand. Uh, and, I, and I use the word weapon, I guess, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, the picks aren't supposed to be used as weapons, but they have been known every once in a while to get up and get underneath people's skin. And you can shave with these babies. Let me tell you, these things, these things are absolutely unbelievable. What are the guys? Dave, thanks very much. Uh, just as we got a break in the action, something we should mention, Drew Rigdon was a goaltender, and something we noticed about the trapper, we talked about the sled, we talked about the sticks, but something we've got to point out of the trapper is it's unbelievable the spikes that are here. Tell me the use of that. Use that glove basically is that you have two sticks to propel yourself as a player. The glove will move you as a goaltender instead of the stick. And it could be quite the weapon. Watch for that. Let's go back to the action, Dave. 
both Canada leads Italy surprisingly by just a score of two of one nothing so far. Surprisingly close. This is a Canadian team that looks like they're suffering from jitters. It's certainly, there's a lot of pressure on the guys, and what I'm seeing coming in here, they're nervous, they're they're tentative, they're they're playing like they're afraid to lose, and that's not our game. Yeah, no, what the Canadian game though is is a physical game. Ray can take take it a little too far. We saw that here, elbowing penalty in the box, another power play that we don't have, penalty killing situations, that's what we cannot have in this game. The Ray train certainly given a physical presence, Greg Westlake and the offense for Canada, a little frustrated because after 30 minutes, the story has been this guy, Santino Stilitano. Back now with Drew Rigdon. And Drew, you and I were talking after the first uh, 30 minutes of play through those first two periods that Jeff Snyder, the head coach, would not be happy and would have some words from the second intermission. And the leaders like Greg Westlake had to show the way. Certainly, Gino. I mean, they played Canada coming out. This is not Canada's style of game. Canada plays an aggressive style of game. And Jeff would have had them in the locker room. He would have told them, let's get your heads in the game. You have veteran guys like Greg Westlake who's going to come in there and he's going to say, listen, all right, boys, let's settle down. Let's get this job done. Now, there's something to be said for the fact that they've got 13 of the 15 players who won gold four years ago in Turner back on this team. But there's also a bit of the change of the guard, two newcomers, including a young 20-year-old on this team who's been spectacular, Adam Dixon. Adam Dixon is, is certainly, he's a, he's a future leader of this team uh, from Midland, Ontario, 20 years old. He's been on the team now for a few years, about three or four years so far. Uh, you'll see here, Adam controls the play, just calm on the ice. Right here, he sets great opportunity for Mark Dorian on the uh, store kind of penalty kill. But one of the things that Adam does is he's just calm with the puck, he controls the puck, and he sees the ice so very, very well, better than probably anybody else in the world. And now, let's give credit where credit is due to the Italian team, specifically their goaltender, Santino Stilitano. He was outstanding, because historically, Italy has not stood much chance against Canada at all, and they were only down one nothing after two periods. Certainly, Stilitano played a fantastic game. He took away a lower portion of the net, he made some big saves when his team needed it, and he gave Canada something to think about, something that they're going to actually have to look at and work on for the next couple of games coming up. And it's interesting that you and I were talking before the game about an interesting phone call that Team Canada received just before they hit the ice wing. Steve Eisman called the guys before, uh, wished them luck, basically tell them that the country's rooting for them, and one of the things that we're looking for is, we're looking at this, is tremendous for the guys to have a guy like Steve Eisman call them. So the quest for the triple gold is still alive and well. Canada goes 1-0, the victory over Italy, 4-0, your final score. The next game is going to be against Sweden in their next group B action. That's at 1.30 Pacific time, 4.30 Eastern time. You can see that game on Rogers Sportsnet. It was a bit of a slow start for Canada, only led by a score of 1-0 over the Italians, who looked to spoil the party early. Then the Canadians got a little physical and turned it into a snipe show with a scoring fest in the third period to take it by a score of four to nothing. Canada, one and all. The Vancouver 2010 Paralympic Winter Games on CTV. Brought to you by Rona. Doing it right. By Air Canada, official airline of the 2010 Paralympic Winter Games. And by the Royal Canadian Mint. Collect the coins. Mark the moments.